Okay, welcome back. So this is going to be the second episode in my kind of uh, beginner to competitive ready uh, guide series, I suppose. And today we're going to be talking about scrims. Um, we're going to be talking about how to maintain and, and operate servers, as well as just places to, to practice the game. So... First things first, uh, what is a scrim? So scrim is just short for scrimmage. It's, you know, you could even find an example here. Let's go to uh, RGL's official Discord. Scrim sixes. So you can see a bunch of people here posting, looking for scrims, and then the time. Um, so these times are pretty standardized to Eastern Standard Time. So uh, I live in Central Time. You can see John here is looking for an amateur slash IM scrim at, it would be 8.30 my time, 9.30 uh, Eastern time. So a scrim is just, you know, you decide uh, to play, you find another team that wants to play, decide on the time, and then you play. Uh, pretty straightforward. So as far as where to find scrims, um, the RGL Discord is a good place. I suppose if you are a complete beginner, um, I'm not sure if there's scrim scheduling in the TF2 Coaching Central um, Discord or not. But uh, yeah, definitely for the, the lower divisions, uh, more beginner players, the RGL Discord is, is where I've seen most of that happening. That being said though, if you are on a team or you've you know played a season or even just without having played a season, have some connections. One of the best places to organize scrims is actually just going directly to the team leaders and uh, just asking them head on instead of just kind of sending out a fishing line and hoping someone bites. Okay, so now let's say that you've got your scrim. Um, what do you do from there? So usually one team will host the scrim. What it means to host the scrim is it means that you're providing the server so some teams will have their own dedicated servers. I'm assuming you don't, in which case you're probably gonna wanna use serve me. So na dot serve me, serve me, is it dot tf? I think it is. So this is a website that uh, provides free access to TF2 servers. So you can just get a server, I have to sign in. Um, I. <laughs> Hold on a second. I'm going to do my login stuff privately here. Um, so yeah, you get to access a free server for an allotted period of time. And I'm going to have to do my Steam Guard here, I think. It's based on time slots, so it's usually more than enough time to to have the, the scrim. And there was an error logging in. This is great. I would really like to actually be able to show the process of getting a scrim. I suppose while there's still not, uh, while there still isn't a login happening, you know what? I don't think it's working. I just tried to log in twice and it seems to be down at the moment. Regardless, um, you're gonna have an option of different servers to select from. Um, you know, different server locations will provide different pings to different people depending on where you're at. Chicago is a go-to usually because it's pretty central. Although if most of the players are West Coast, then there's West Coast servers, things of that nature. Um, be aware though that uh, during very high traffic times, especially around scrim times, uh, there's a limited number of servers, so they might all be booked. You can opt to get Serve Me Premium, um, which I think is a like three month um, purchase. I don't know the pricing, anything like that. But uh, you can get Serve Me Premium to have access to more servers and be pretty much guaranteed a, uh, a server at time. But I think if you're new, then you should just be fine getting the, uh, the free ones. Just be aware. Um, try to book it perhaps in advance for the time slot that you need it. And 
yeah, then you can operate that. So now you've got your server and you're going to be given connect info for this server. And let's see if I can't uh, find some random connect info here that doesn't uh, interfere with anyone. Here's a connect info channel. So all of these are different server connects. All you have to do is copy this connect part and then put it into your um, into your console and then you can just connect. So I can't connect because the server is no longer running. Um, I specifically chose ones that are no longer running because I don't want to um, leak anyone's connect info. And that's the thing, you can leak connect info in a sense because if you have this string, then you can connect to this server. So, you know, if people that aren't playing that scrim are able to join that connect, then they could join and do whatever they want. Troll, it can be annoying. So it's best to just have the, the connect info um, for the players that are playing, and that's pretty much it. So that's connect info. Although when you rent that server, you're going to get something else, which is called an archon. So archon commands are server commands. Um, anyone who joins a server can't just do commands and have the server change things. You need the archon password and archon status basically to be able to do things like that, like change map, um, anything of that nature. Um, configs for what kind of format you're playing, anything like that. So usually whoever gets the server is going to be the one doing this but uh, i mean anyone who has archon can can be the one maintaining things you just type out archon underscore password and then whatever the password is and then after you do that for the duration that you're connected to that server you should have access to use archon commands so a common one is you're going to want to change the map. So Archon, and then uh, I think it's uh, Change Level, and then whatever the name of the map you want to do. And you have to be really precise with this. So if you want to do CP Process, I think the version that people are using now is uh, like F11 or something like that. So you do have to make sure that it's uh, it's uh, the exact name of the version of the map that you want to play. And so that's for changing levels. As far as, um, let's say you're playing on process, but the server is running a Koth configuration, which has a different uh, round timer, different round limits, and just not adequate for playing 5CP. Well, then you're going to want to exec now I believe the uh, the file name is uh, RGL sixes five CP scrim dot CFG. So that's a config file that'll set everything um, to be in in coordination with just a standard RGL five CP scrim. That's that, um, and then when you're playing Koth, you're going to just change 5CP to Koth. Nice and simple. So those are the basic Archon commands um, just for maintaining and running a scrim. Um, what next? Okay, as far as practice goes, so scrims are fantastic practice uh, because you know it's just the same setting that you would be playing in pretty much maybe a little less serious because there aren't stakes, but like it functions almost the same. Uh, but scrims are hard to schedule because you need 12 people willing to play it. Uh, it usually only happens in certain time slots, like around 8.30 to 10.30 is the usual scrim times, 8.30 more being in the lower divisions. Um, and let's say, you know, it's not the evening or you don't have enough people that want to play well there's still things you can do to practice um, so there are surf maps um, 
any map with the surf prefix is going to be a surf map. Let's see if I can join this and give a quick example. So uh, if you're familiar with source games, there's surf in uh, I think CS or CS and CSGO is more is more common than in uh, TF2. This is going to take a while to download. But uh, surf is basically a movement game mode. I don't want to continue downloading this. I think it's forcing me to, regardless. Okay, so it's like a movement game mode, basically. Um, and it's great for training your movement. And keep in mind, in TF2, movement is as important as your aim. Um, so surfing, definitely a, a good way to, to practice moving, in particular uh, air strafing, which is a movement tech in uh, Source games. Now, I should mention there's um, surf often refers to something else. Um, since damage causes knockback in this game, if you intentionally ride that knockback away to safety, that's called surfing. And surfing is a particular skill set relevant to medic. Um, just to clear up any confusion, um, the surf game mode is not intrinsically linked to surfing as a game mechanic. Um, if anything, a game mode that would help more for the surfing mechanic is actually jump maps. So let's see, for example, here we'll jump or we'll join uh, this server. Uh, so jump maps are you play as either soldier or demo man. Let's see if we can't just spectate these people. So you can see Deluxe user here is playing soldier. And these are, as you can see, custom maps designed for training rocket jumping or sticky jumping. So I can join play demo man um, and just play through the map. Uh, you don't have to be a soldier or a demo player to, uh, to get anything out of these. Obviously, like, you're not going to be able to play as a jumping demo in-game if you're a scout main, but the movement, um, precision, just the muscle memory of things like that do help and do translate generally. That being said, though, if you are in particular a soldier player, then jump maps will help you more so than for other classes. Uh, just because a lot of the things you're doing in these jump maps will actually translate almost directly into the game. Okay, so that's jump maps. Now let's say um, you want to practice your your DM, your deathmatch, not just your movement. Well, there's MGE as a possibility. Let's join one of these. We're going to have some people playing here. So MGE, My Gaming Edge, is a game mode um, where you have two-player arenas. This is not a very... Uh, <laughs> these people are kind of messing around. It looks like playing Pyro v. Pyro. But you can see uh, at the top left there, the first person to 20 kills wins. Um, each time someone gets a kill, they both just respawn in random parts of the arena. And just fight again. So MGE, decent way to train your aim. Um, I will give a little warning label to it though. Um, winning MGE does not necessarily mean that you're improving. Obviously if you are good at hitting shots and good at killing people, then you will be getting better at the game, but there is a difference between being good at MGE and being good at competitive sixes so just you know it's fine to practice your aim here but uh, I wouldn't recommend like picking up strats or strategies in these arenas specifically to win in these arenas specifically because it may uh, hurt you in the long run but yeah definitely uh, probably the most accessible out of all uh, the DM deathmatch uh, practice methods because there's usually someone willing to MG, especially like teammates, things of that nature. Okay, now lastly is DM or deathmatch as a server game mode, not just a concept. 
So DM is, in a sense, similar to MGE. When you die, you just instantly respawn. Um, and it does also take place on competitive maps, oh, which it's changing level right now. But it is a little different. So a deathmatch is, or deathmatch server is an eight person server. Um, and you're all, it's not free for all, it's f teams of four versus four. You're all f fighting each other simultaneously. Um, so in an eight person server, people would spawn in random places. I would kill the red team since I'm on the blue team. And you get uh, ammo and some health restored when you get a kill, just so that uh, you have a little sustaining power and you're not always sitting around reloading. Very fast paced, um, definitely a good way to warm up or practice uh, your, your DM skills, and probably the best way, in my opinion, to practice DM skills. Um, maybe, I don't know how they, they pair up against scrims, but uh, highly recommend. There is a big downside though, in that DM servers, as you can see, like this one is completely empty and they really are only populated during or just before scrim times. So during those time slots, definitely see if you can get in a DM server. Uh, it's some great practice. But uh, that's gonna be it for the practice methods. So we went over you know, what's a scrim, how to get one, how to host a server, how to do server commands, and things of that nature and good places to go for practice when you're not scrimming. Um, so yeah, that pretty much covers it. And I'll see you guys in the next installment.